Now, D-Ring, Electrocute, Ignite, honestly, lots of damage from the Diana. Probably starts Q. We're going to go and start pushing the wave a little bit just so that we can level two faster than her. And right now her Q is on cooldown, so we probably find a free E auto and then we walk away. Probably take more damage from her minions than I do to her because her minion design is Pog Champ. But it does apply mental damage because she knows that I outperformed her, so. Because she can only farm at max range using her Q, we can pretty much force her to use it as a safety net. My god, he's a simp. It's a pretty, pretty close E on that one as well. Now the thing is, we don't actually know if they're verticaling, so we could actually get ganked pretty early here. I'm just gonna pop a electric and walk away. Get some chip damage in. Eventually she just runs out of sustain, but she does have really good damage prevention of her W. Which are things that we have to play around no matter what. But... If she does walk up to hit this minion, I am going to go ahead and just play for the EQ combo. It's just pretty much free. Whenever you see somebody walking up to the last hit a minion as a melee specifically, just punish them. You kind of want to just keep forcing them to use their range skills to farm, which gives you even more space to work with. Fortunately, still don't know where Graves is, but Graves is kind of a bad champion when it comes to invading. He's going to Q this no matter what, so four second cooldown. More like six probably, a rank one. If he goes for this melee minion, you better believe we're going to punish her. Alright, so once again, we just get a free trade. We do have Pryo if we need to move. Rash is still bottom, we don't really need to worry about it. But we just want to make sure we're pressuring her on every single one of these minions to make sure she is rating HP, at least. And eventually we can set up a kill window, or we can get a counter gank here. Surprised, but it looks like they're just not doing. But I'm gonna let her walk up to this one. I think we actually just get it off the spear. Just kidding. I'm gonna give her the jump here, and maybe she just all ends me. Now, I'm actually walking right, now, so maybe I hear a flash cue. I think Nidalee might be able to play this. I do have C-Pot sticking, so eventually I will get a bunch of healing here. Probably gonna be Flash, Fresh Hook. I don't think he knows that I have Flash, so... I was waiting for my Lee Sin to fucking hop, but... I guess he just didn't want to go for it. I could have EQ'd for sure, I just don't know why. Just got absolutely outplayed by the Thresh. Like, I can only imagine how free that would have been if we had just played it properly, but... Super unfortunate. Yeah, thanks for the follow, Galactic Nexus. Appreciate it. We're a little bit behind now. We can still play the game out. It's just unlucky. I did kind of grief him a little bit. I'll accept responsibility for my misplay. If I get this kill here, though, it's actually just massive. Okay. Pretty close. Assist is pretty good, too. 75 gold. We're pretty much still good in terms of gold. I think we actually could have got a triple if I played that upside fight correctly. It really just came down to using my EQ to build up fear and then not just getting hooked. Unfortunately, there's really no way for me to get anything here, but I'm in the area just in case I need to be. But this is going to be slow pushing back to us. We're kind of in a bad spot because she's got her stem Hextech alternator. So she can just take really tre cheesy trades. But once again, looking to punish whenever she goes up for melee autos. She's not going to use her Q. We are going to look for a punish. Now she's got to come in for these, right? Because she's got no Q. So just playing off of that. I think we actually would have won if we had Inspiration from Time Warp Tonic. Tragic. She's about at 6 though, so I'm kind of worried. Yeah, she could have actually all into me right there and probably forced me to flash. Hey, yo, Time Warp Tonic kind of broken. Low key, guys. We stopped the recall, which is pretty good. 
Uh, eventually, we're just going to recall of 865 in exchange for Lost Chapter, which is pretty much this wave. She wants to leave, it looks like, so I'm just going to go ahead and push this so I can leave as well. I think it's too late for her to get there anyways. Wow, she was there. She got there really fast. And for some reason, I thought the fight was, like, way over here. That's a great play, though. And we can also just go and swap to Oracle Lens. I just realized my support was level 3 there. 7 minutes. But this is kind of all stemming from the early laning phase. Because we made this really big mistake in the 2v3, ends up turning around to Diana getting a little bit of an advantage here. It does also have to do with the fact that we're taking pretty much scaling runes as well. Now we're going to continue to let this push into us. Diana is going to lose a cannon minion off this. It will probably be a level up, maybe. Force her to Q if we can. And now we just play off the minions because she has to jump in if she wants to get them. And what I'd like to do here is, even though my Gwyn is invading topside right now, I'm just going to go and hold the wave here just so it's a little bit closer to my tower as well. Make her work for it if she wants it. And if we keep doing this, eventually we'll have enough chip damage to actually kill her, which is crazy. Well, I just fucked up. I am confused, actually, but I guess it's fine. We're just going to wait just until he's a little bit more zoned off. Wow, it's really bad timing for them. If my Lee Sin looks for it, I actually am looking to fight. But my Lee Sin is a vault right now, so... We're just gonna focus on pushing mid. Make sure that Diana loses something here. A really, really nicely turnaround play from the Nidalee. Like, great spear into a continued chase. I think Graves gets away here. Unless... Ooh, actually cracked. We're gonna go now to grab the Blasting Wand. And Dark Seal's gonna be really nice here as well, giving us a little bit of extra survivability with that health. Gives us the ability to scale even more of Dark Seal stacks. But moving back into mid lane, we got a level advantage. We are 20 CS up. It looks like she's going for. Is this actually Horizon Focus first item? I've never actually seen a Diana build this. Just kidding. Those are the those are what you build for Night Harvester now, right? That's actually just Night Harvester build. <laughs> I almost embarrassed myself in front of all you YouTube commenters telling me that I don't know itemization, but I know itemization. Also, Magical Footwear is finally online. But we're just going to be waiting for Ultimate. Ultimate is kind of the bread and butter of Vex. If you try to fight without it, it's still good. It's just it's not really going to set up plays much. Just waiting for her to finally break and hit a Yana minion for once in her life. She's got to walk up for the cannon here, though. So. Forced to flash it. I could have technically flashed into her, but I just don't feel like trading flash for flash. I'm actually down to look for an invade, it's just we don't know where Thresh is right now. Not bad. We gotta play around the Thresh though, he is below us. Actually, we could probably look for him. He's not in... My Nidalee's not in range yet, so she wouldn't be able to follow up with a spear. Unless... Ooh, he actually healed off of the Raptor camp. That's actually super unlucky. Yoink. <laughs> Get nabbed. Alright, let's switch the lane out. We're actually really close to Ludens here. I just need one more wave. I'm gonna go and ping it to let him know that's what I'm working on. Plate here would be nice. My Nidalee's in the area, which is the only reason why I feel like playing this aggressively. 
we also have access to Lee Sin, or at least the pressure from Lee Sin being in the area. If she actually had vision, she would obviously know that they're not near me, and now that she knows, she can play a little bit more aggressively. But this should just be drop rift, and then the tower dies, and you do the tower dive after, but that's fine too. Do you always want to follow up with a W after an ultimate? Uh, the reason why I follow up with a W is because it is an instant cast, and when you hit somebody with a fear, it makes it harder for them to dodge the following combo, which is the EQ. Because EQ has a cast time, right? Now, of course, you're at melee range, so they do go off pretty much instantly as well. It just kind of depends. I pretty much always do R1, R2, R into W, EQ. Wow, we are taking a lot of damage here. Are they actually just forcing this? There's no way. We have Lee Sin kick. Just kick him into the tower, yeah. We just focus the... The Felios? Hello? We're just waiting. We're gonna force him to walk back and forth sideways. Nice. And we're pretty much online now. I don't think there's really anything that can stop us this game besides stacking magic resist. That was a really big overextend from them trying to get that tier 2 tower. Now I get access to Sork Boots here which makes roaming even better, but I also get the Amp Tome. Which is pretty crazy. It's a really, really big power spike for me, including the 32 ability power that we get from Dark Seal stacks. Now, something to notably mention is that there is now an extra one second off on your Mistral Bolt. So, this is a 3.33 second cooldown now, which means I can instantly shove lanes. Does mean I'm a little bit more mana hungry, but 10% damage ratio as well. Pretty good buff to Vex in general, like facilitating roam potential. It's not going to go crazy on the burst or anything like that, but it does make a significant difference. I feel like this guy's just going to flash, so... We're going melee range, make sure that he can't dodge it. Um, if I had TWT here, I would catch up because of the move speed diff, but she's currently in tier 1 boots, so Night Harvester, enough. If I hit Ludens, it gives me the move speed buff, and then we just max range E. Dude, I actually almost- I missed that, that last Q. We're just gonna continue pushing top here. Unfortunately, it looks like they actually got Infernal Drake, so... Not the best for us. And that's kind of an issue that we made, so like, as a roaming skirmish champion, we want to be at every single team fight, or at least every single play that's gonna be a, a fight for you know, resources, is we have so much value in team fights. So like me going topside to get the free pick kill is obviously good, but it doesn't necessarily give us a team advantage outside of just the gold on individual players. Whereas if I go to this dragon fight, we could actually make a huge difference. But I'm going to go and grab the Hextech alternator here, and then we'll just come back. If I'm feeling a little bit scared, then I could have instead opted for the stopwatch, but I don't think they've been playing that well, so I'm just going to opt for more damage. And I would like to play through mid, that's kind of like the big thing that separates Vex, is that even though you're really good at side laning, being close and proximity to teamfight is usually always a huge plus. So hopefully we are given that opportunity. I don't want to spend the rest of the game side laning and then having absolutely zero opportunities, but... It might happen. Now we do one shot. We do a lot of damage. We're doing about 1.6. Off of a full combo. Wow, what an expectation. That's actually such a ballsy play. This guy really thought he was doing something right there. He's like, look, I'm going to do a backwards hook into the Twitch that's behind me. Just getting some vision over the wall. He's pushing to us because we hit the E behind him, so it's just like a free kill. But whenever you hit fear with your E, it sends them away from the center of the blast, which is very different than your other skills, which sends you away from them. A very different champion design. 
We probably could have just played the Sigma Tower. I don't even know. I'm trying to catch this guy. I just feel this overwhelming need that when I get the ult reset, that I play for the ultimate again. Pretty much like every single time. Once again, pushing him back into us. At this point, he's pretty much ending. Yeah. That's tragic. He just gave up. Now, I could play for Mejice here because we know for a fact this is a way to get stacks. Um, I'm going to give him a chance and I'm instead just going to opt for Shadow Flame like a nice individual. Shadow Flame isn't that good this game. I'm just really ahead early, so building a Shadow Flame second does give me a substantial spike. But you'll see they have one, two, three melee champions almost, and they have some Merc Treads. So on average, they're all going to have around 60 MR, besides obviously the great uh, Athelios. Now, I really don't want to side lane, but my Twitch keeps going mid, so I just feel like I'm forced. And they have vision here. If we play for Rift, it's actually great for us, because once again, an opportunity to excuse the team fight. We unstoppable it, though. If I got the reset instantly, would have been able to throw the ultimate, but... Looking for Graves right now, probably on Rift or in that vicinity. Unlucky. There's no way they're continuing to push top right, that's like an illegal play. We both kind of bitched out, unlucky. But you can see that my CF's, CS suffers greatly, but that's kind of sometimes what you need to do to succeed on this champion. It's more likely to work in piss low, like lower elos, because people will just want to fight no matter what. Okay, I'll grab it. I've got enough for Shadow Flame, so I'm going to go and opt to recall first, and then I'll just come back with the, the phase gates. And hopefully I get to mid lane now so that I can rotate to both sides of the map instead of being stuck on one. This bolt clear casters with one Q. Ludens? Uh, you, you clear EQ at Lost Chapter, and then Ludens, it's a one shot, I believe. But Dragon is really what we want to be fighting over. Like, Soul is a very, very huge commodity. Soul is a 90% win rate on average. Interesting. Okay, so Twitch is on the wrong side of the map right now. I have no way of contesting this without my teammates, so instead I'm going to make the only play available to me, which is hard shoving it down mid lane. If Gwyn goes for this, maybe I will go for it as well, but there's no way we get there in time. Tragic. And then I think I should have just instantly threw the ultimate, but... And it's just going to be a ton of free ultimates at this point. It's actually a quad kill for Gwen. Wow. Crazy game. And then we got a little Rift Herald here. If we save his life, we actually get our slam, which would be huge. Let's go Shelly. You can hard shove it down my mid lane. How about you calm down, okay? Oh, we even get another charge? There's no way. Okay, I think we actually might be able to end the game here. Unless, do not, oh my gosh, okay, we're trolling. Really bad E, I might actually die here to a hook or something like that. I don't feel like it's necessary to keep going, but it looks like my Gwyn after rework, you gotta keep in mind that we have two rework champions on our team right now. <laughs> Gwyn changes kind of seem busted if she's 914 with literally zero, like, best. This is kind of an L right here, like, we feel compelled to end the game even though there's like, it's really hard to end the game with one inhibitor, because if they have one or two players, they can just clear waves, and then it becomes a waste of time. This is usually the trap in lower elo games when you get like ahead early, is you just cut, you keep running it down mid and then giving them a bunch of kills, and then you're kind of just stuck there. I got visually bugged out of my fucking mind. Unlucky. But that should be GG if we focus on the Nexus. Um, final thoughts on the Vex buff. Maybe Gwen's a better champion, but you can definitely see that it's beneficial. Uh, statistically, like she's doing good in lower elos now just because she has a lot more access to wave clear, which is something that lower elo players struggle with when it comes to like control, especially for a skirmish-based champion. Um, statistically, in higher elo, 
we are seeing kind of like a 51 right now, but the sample size is too low. So it'll be interesting to see what the results are after a few days, but it definitely is a buff. That's what a buff is. Buff makes your champ stronger. But it doesn't solve the damage issues that she has. She still doesn't do enough damage if you fall behind. And the only way that you can consistently get ahead early is just kind of by forcing your team to fight with Lee Sen or like any early game jungler, which doesn't happen too often. So pretty bad with triple AP. We just get lucky enemy teams running it. I wouldn't say that Vex is... It's just different. It's a different dynamic for higher elo. You guys are going to really, really enjoy the new Vex, though. Not new, but like, current Vex state. Where's the other one? Where's everyone else? I guess it's just a surrender. Thank you for watching. If you liked the video, make sure to like and subscribe and tell me what you think about the Vex changes, the Vex buffs. And I hope you have a great night. Bye-bye. Or great day. Whatever.